Before Trump, before Bernie, there was already a much needed market Americans wanted for a president that wasn't your average politician. You think people just recently started hating our two-party system? Oh, you. But I think this particular brand of anti-establishment candidates began in the 90s with a single man who in 1992 ran as a third-party candidate and won 19% of the popular vote just by using his own money and a few infomercials, Ross Perot. Who's Ross Perot, you might be thinking? Since I know the age of my audience, you most likely don't know who Ross Perot was. While American history is filled with third-party candidates, for better or worse, Ross Perot is different as I don't think any politician is more relevant to the issues and discussion in the United States today than Ross Perot. What if Ross Perot somehow won the election in 1992? Perot was a Texan billionaire who throughout most of his life was politically active. Perot decided to throw his hat into the ring for a few key reasons. His ideas were simple. Trickle-down economics do not work. NAFTA must not be allowed to pass, as it will only export more American jobs. We need to reduce our deficit by taxing the top percent. Huh, sound familiar? Well, also, we need stronger borders, and to stand up to some Asian country that is a threat to our economy. Also familiar. He debated both Clinton and Bush in national debates, and got his image out there by paying for 30-minute infomercials where he pointed at a graph and explained in detail the path America was going down. Both parents are working, some of them two jobs, just to make ends meet. Running the value of the dollar down is really hurting the people in our country. And that actually had quite an impact. Despite the fact he was third party and even dropped out of the race for a brief time, he won 19% of the popular vote. Didn't win any electoral college votes, considering his reach was evenly distributed, but this was still tremendous for the 1990s. All right, history over. So, it's incredibly unlikely, but hey, somehow Ross Perot won the presidency in 1992. How did that happen? Really, just by the way the United States runs its system, good luck ever having a third party actually win. Which is why ever since then, the populist candidates try to change the two parties from the inside. But for the fun of it, let's say somehow Ross Perot wins by the Electoral College. A third party candidate goes into the White House. This by itself would be, at the very least, a major shock to the balance of power in the government. It's rare that a candidate is ever able to do all the things they promised while running, and especially for Perot, this is still an uphill climb. In 93, he's alone against a two-party Congress. There are a few examples where in states the same scenario occurred, with an independent governor and the government gridlocks as the state Congress refuses to pass anything. But what happens when the president's ideology is just kind of a mix of the two? If I was an optimist, I'd say perhaps his positive qualities could win congressmen from both sides over. He could be quite the compromise candidate, and since it is the 90s, I would say maybe he could get some legislation passed. Not today, but back then probably. How the legislative branch reacts to the president is now outside of party lines, and is determined by individual policy opinions by senators and representatives. A third front, if you will. And since there is a third front, it changes exactly how one midterm might go. The Republican Revolution of 1994, when the Republicans won both houses and Congress for the first time in 40 years. Had Perot won instead, this revolution might still happen, but it'd actually be beneficial for him. Republicans saw Perot like people see libertarians and greens today. Spoilers that only let the opposition win. In our timeline, Perot created the Reform Party for his second attempt in 1996. But had he won, I could imagine in an attempt to not need the Republicans, or at least have to rely on them, he encourages his new party to win seats in the midterms. The midterms wouldn't see a surge of reform politicians. In fact, it'd probably be only a few seats, if that. But Perot being in the picture is enough to shape how the 94 midterms go. And what was a Republican revolution might be overshadowed by a much smaller anti-establishment revolution. Even if the Republicans do still win the majority, they're at least less hostile to Perot than the Democrats would be. 
And this is because the Reform Party is a weird mix mash of capitalism, progressive economics, while also expanding the war on drugs. In our timeline, the Reform Party devolved into basically the haven for radicals on any side. It was a JREG video in real life. Nazis, fascists, communists, centrists, radical centrists, liberals, all coming together to say, we don't like either side, but this is the only place that would take us. I know what's going on here. You've all become idiots. Hey, let's all join the Reform Party. Whoa! It was pure populism. And after losing so many elections, it lost steam and fell into irrelevancy. Think of it as the proto-slime for the type of strategies that would eventually bring forth people like Bernie Sanders or eventually Donald Trump onto the national stage. First, let's say that in Perot's term, he's able to shoot NAFTA down, or at least prevent it for a little bit longer from being a thing. What NAFTA did was exactly what Perot predicted it would. It allowed American companies to suck jobs out of the US and put them in Mexico for lower wages. According to the Economic Policy Institute, this resulted in 850,000 jobs being lost from the mid-90s until 2013, and 70% lower wages in Mexico. This was a plan that Clinton promised would create 200,000 new jobs, and instead lost four times as many. While areas like the Rust Belt were hurting since the 70s, NAFTA was a death blow to many communities and in effect created just enough of a factor for when someone like Trump came around with anti-NAFTA rhetoric and made an impact in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin in 2016. This alternate 90s still sees a slowly dying auto industry, but there is never an escape hatch that US companies can simply use to shut down plants and move jobs into Mexico. Though keep in mind, this is still widely debated, those are just the numbers. The 90s may, and I mean may, see the rise of the Reform Party. One that isn't simply the crackpot den that it was by the 2000s, but an actual legitimate party of people wishing for that central aisle with clear political views. Even after he lost his first campaign, Perot still gained 8% of the popular vote in 1996, a time when the map looked like this, and many people generally liked Bill Clinton. So considering he would be competing with any of these people, I think he could have had a chance, assuming there's no unforeseen scandals. Had this occurred, well, it wouldn't be a fluke anymore. The two-party system of the United States would officially become three, and the Reform Party, at least for now, is here to stay. Being that it was the 90s, and Perot was even against using military action in Kuwait, I can say don't expect the US to go into any unexpected wars. Perot was influential to a lot of people even running as an independent. In fact, those views of a billionaire coming in to challenge the average politicians resonated with one certain man, Donald Trump. Trump was not always the way he is today, at least politically. He flip-flopped between Reagan-era conservative to neoliberal, but the main people who influenced his ideology weren't Reagan or Clinton, it was Ross Perot and Jesse Ventura. He chose to run with the Reform Party as an enthusiast of Perot, even though by this time it was tearing itself apart. Split between Perot enthusiasts and conservatives that thought the Republican Party wasn't conservative enough. Trump's ideology was firmly with Perot, and the fight during 2000 was over what path the party should go down. And oh boy does he have some, uh, opinions about Pat Buchanan. By looking at Trump's book written for the 2000 campaign, he laid out his policies. Had the two-party system been challenged, had Perot won even at least once, the Reform Party could have been popular enough for Trump to have a more successful campaign. He never would have had to hitch his wagon to Republican or Democrat, and alongside that, the policies thereof, because especially reading through this book, I wouldn't call him your typical Republican, or really a Republican at all. In this book, he details his plans as president to tax the top 1% of America. The rich will scream, only the top 1% of people those with a net worth of 10 million or more would be affected by my plan. The other 99% would get deep reductions in their federal income taxes. Banning of assault rifles, as he calls them. I generally oppose gun control, but I support the ban on assault weapons, and I also support a slightly longer waiting period to purchase a gun. And even... universal healthcare. 
People are being restrained from getting the medical attention they need because of an army of bureaucrats is looking over doctors' shoulders and telling them what to do. The Canadian plan also helps Canadians live longer and healthier than Americans. There are fewer medical lawsuits, less loss of labor to sickness, and lower cost to companies paying for medical care for their employees. We need as a nation to re-examine the single-payer plan, as many individual states are doing. Medicare could certainly be operated the same way. A single-payer, universal plan ought to be as well. What? Of course, there are a few key things Trump did stick with. Strengthening borders, going after China, and a pro-small business mindset. But all of these platforms were basically reformist platforms, not exclusive to Republicans. In this alternate timeline, if the Reform Party was big enough, weirdly enough, he'd stick with what were his original views. A mix of very liberal and slightly conservative ideas with the main focus just being himself. And that's kind of the funny thing about this system. The party can shape you, but also somebody who wasn't even wholly conservative 16 years before can reshape the party by themselves. With this said, a 2000 presidential run most likely wouldn't end in a Trump victory. He wouldn't be in office 20 years ago with Oprah as his vice president. That's not even a joke, that's who he wanted as VP. <laughs> But with Perot being in charge throughout the 90s, this does shape who eventually runs and who the victor might be in the 2000 election. Without a Clinton presidency, I doubt Gore ever would have been on the ticket. Perhaps somebody like John Kerry might attempt to run. I believe Bush could have probably ran no matter what. Those controversial results in Florida most likely wouldn't have occurred if the race was split three ways. While famous in the 80s, this 2000 presidential run would be America's reintroduction to Trump. His spotlight wouldn't be on a TV show, but instead as a candidate with his political views well known. Views that really wouldn't mesh well with the Republican Party, which may forever change his image in the public eye, far before any future presidential run that he might want to have. One main aspect you probably think I'm leaving out is Bill Clinton and the Clintons. For being a president of eight years, there really wasn't anything dramatic about it. Any such thing as a crime bill most likely would have been passed by Perot, as well as expanding the war on drugs. Nothing Bill did was particularly crazy or exceptional. He was simply president for a simpler decade before things got bad. Speaking of which, America most likely would have went down the same war on terror path no matter what. However, without Bush, we probably wouldn't have went into Iraq. Had the Reform Party remained, perhaps it could have been a reasonable alternative for many Americans as the parties began to grow more and more apart. And whether politically this could work, it'd be enough of a mark that it could shape how the other two parties operate. As for today in 2020, the main impact that we all know is Trump. The rhetoric he would have used by the time of this alternate 2010s wouldn't really be all that new. Populism probably would have rose within the United States, or even mainstream politicians adapting the same language. Whether it was right or left, entirely depends with the tides. So what was the point of this video? Was it to show how flawed our system is? That Ross Perot predicted it all, Ron Paul style? No, I just think it's funny that if Trump had won in 2000, he wanted Oprah to be his VP. Oprah can do anything!